Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, it's Cynic Alex, and today we have the patch notes for the upcoming Defenders Icarus Mephisto update. I don't even know what this update is, it's so many things, and one of those things, rightfully so, is a very, very hype update. My summary of the patch notes is that they are very, very good. There's a bunch of positive stuff, there's really good changes and improvements and new inclusions. Uh, there is, however, one criticism I have of the update of the of the patch notes of the thing but we'll get to that a little bit later it's it's just a criticism it's not actually like a bad thing so yeah liter literally nothing bad in the in this in these patch notes as far as i can see and only one criticism so as far as the least disliked patch notes this might be up there with like number one all time or like number two or three all time especially if you're a fan of well, you'll see. I don't want to spoil it for you. If you're a fan of certain characters, you'll see. And it's not even the defenders. Anywho, let, let's get into it. So, uh, Icarus is coming as a brand new hero. He is the leader of the Eternals. How you obtain Icarus is either through the bio subscription. There's two different bio subscriptions, but they're basically paid subscriptions monthly. Or, just for this month only, the future pass. So, he will be free as a one-star unlock through the normal future pass. The normal pass rewards. So you can get him 100% for free, and then you can get a Mega Rank Up ticket 100% for free, and then you can also get a Mega Tier 2 ticket 100% for free, and you can Tier 2 him 100%, say with me now, for free. So very, very cool. If Even if you're not playing the game right now and you're watching this video, log in when the update's live, play around a little bit to get to the Future Pass rewards. It's not even like all the way to the end. You don't have to get to all the way to level 50. You get to level like 20, and you get him 20 bios unlocked, boom, and then you can go back to uh, not playing or whatever. And you want to build him up because he looks pretty sick. He gives all all Eternals allies 60% all attack. And this is a huge clue that he's not the last Eternal to show up. 100% they're planning to release multiple Eternals in this game uh, leading up to November. Because that's why they're starting with the leader and they're starting with this crazy all attack buff. He's got a lot of other buffs for himself as well. He doesn't revive. That's the only thing that I think is a bit weird. But... I'm guessing he doesn't have a revive because one of the inhu one of the inhumans, one of the Eternals is going to give a revive to all Eternal allies like Sunbird does. It makes total sense because they're literally called Eternals, but they just want to make that revival special rather than giving it to every single Eternal, just giving them all a revive, like a generic revive and making it feel lame. They're going to highlight one Eternal as being sort of key to the team by giving them uh, a revive to all uh, Eternals allies. But yeah, he's got a heal like similar to uh, Deadpool, a little bit worse than Wolverine, but he's got super armor, all defense, 30% damage reduction. He's got skill damage, bonus damage. So he's got like all the really juicy, juicy passives except for Pierce and um, self debuff immunity. That's the only thing he's really missing. But then he's got incapacitation on three different skills. He's got ignore iframe and V pad, which is really nice. So that skill that Cage was showing off where he shoots with the beams. You can move around, which is so cool, and it's iframe ignore. So it's going to be so satisfying to pull that off against certain enemies. Paralysis, minus 50 all defense down, penetration, invincibility and immunity, uh, and accumulation, the, uh, damage dealt, not damage received. So very, very strong character. He also has stun, uh, and, per, uh, stun and silence. He doesn't have burn. That's the only one he's missing, which is kind of surprising because his eye beams should probably burn. But anyways... Uh, yeah, seems like a very, very strong character and just the beginning for the Eternals. He's probably not going to, you know, smash the meta, but it's, he's sort of getting that snowball rolling. It's at the top of the hill right now, but it's going to get bigger as it gets towards us. Anyways, we got these four new uniforms for the Defenders, and these are wild uniforms. These are crazy buffs. So if you like the Defenders or you want to play as the Defenders, these are these are all looking kind of like must-haves. Again, you don't have to play as these characters, so these are must-haves for absolutely everyone. But if you want to play as these characters, if you want to transcend in Tier 3, Daredevil, uh, then these uniforms are, are basically must-haves. He gets a heal when he dodges, 30% heal with a 9-second cooldown, which is crazy for PvE and PvP. He does get, it's confirmed from the, from the patch notes, he does get 70% ignore dodge. So Null is about to get absolutely dunked. So if you're struggling against Null, honestly, Daredevil might be the best or one of the best uh, just super easy pickups because a base 70% ignore dodge is insane. You don't need any strikers, as you will see a little bit later. Uh, you don't even need Valkyrie. It's bananas. And it sort of makes it makes sense thematically, right? Daredevil, he's got that thermo vision. Um, he can see you, so he you can't really get away. He's got some skills with stun and bind and paralysis or uh, sorry, stun and bind and 
stun and bind yeah just stun and bind he has a counter attack iframe ignore skill with fracture and paralysis and uh, penetration and immunity and a damage proc and accumulation of damage dealt not damage received so this is really 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 good for pve uh and pvp He's got incapacitation, he's got minus 60 all defense down, invincibility, he's got the frenzy buff, he also removes incapacitation on the fourth skill. By the way, it's a minus 60, minus 60. So he's gonna fill that cup in two hits. So you can easily one you could probably, I'm not gonna say easily, you could probably one shot with Daredevil, which is nuts. Uh, and then he's got fracture and incapacitation and all defense down on the five skill. So he's looking like a monster, but he's a monster on his own, right? Now let's take a look at some of the supporting defenders. This is where it gets really, really cool. I feel like they really went all in. The devs went all in on making these uniforms really work together. And you're going to see this in Alliance Conquest, but it also makes a lot of sense uh, to put these characters together in PvE content as well, which I think is honestly really cool. So uh, check this out. His uniform effect applies to Defender's allies. So they did one of the things I was hoping for. They're creating the Defender's uh, ability tag. So all Defender's allies, if Luke Cage is on your team, you're going to get 35% ignore dodge boom so just just daredevil just matt murdoch and luke cage over 100 percent ignore dodge right there for for um for daredevil obviously luke wouldn't get the 70 percent from uh, daredevil's passive but that's that's crazy that's so so good and then his new leadership he gives all defenders allies not all allies just defenders immunity to physical damage and remove all debuff so this is very good for pvp very good for conquest very very good debuff removal and physical damage immunity yeah so imagine a couple of weeks in pvp go by you know silver surfer gene gray sentry get banned or and maybe molecule man gets banned so hulk creeps up you know physical immunity boom he just comes in and claps uh hulk how sick is that uh then his passive heals him just like uh, wolverine but for some reason it says two seconds here i think it should say one second i think it's a typo anyways hopefully it's not two seconds because that would be dumb his tier two passive gives him 30 percent base hp and reflect and 30 percent damage reduction which is sick his skills don't seem that spicy except he has the sharon rogers accumulation that's right he does have to take damage but he gets a 15% attack buff for each 1% of damage taken. That means with maximum accumulation, he bumps his attack stat by 150%. 150%, just like Sharon Rogers. So, man's warming up to clap cheeks. He's got incapacitation and remove and uh, all defense downs. It's okay. He's got really short cooldowns, I have to say. 10, 10 15 seconds for everything. And then his fifth skill has iframe ignore. That charging skill is an iframe ignore skill with fracture and penetration and invincibility. He smells like an Alliance Conquest headache wrapped in in a in a, a bread basket of, of punches and kicks. I, he sounds he honestly does sound quite dope. A little bit more PvP side for my taste, but still good. Then you have Jewel. So if you thought the synergy stopped, no, they get better. This is pretty crazy. So this is wild. So her uniform effect, uh, when her H when the HP is below 35%, it applies to all defenders allies. Decreased damage received by 95% for 10 seconds. I didn't just make a, I didn't just misspeak there. 95% damage reduction. Now, I don't want to overstate this value because we know Blue Marvel has 70% damage reduction and he could still take damage. But 95% is 25% more than 70%. And that's with the existence of characters like Colossus. And that's with the existence of other damage reductions. Like Luke Cage already has 30% base damage reduction. So he's going to be over 100% damage reduction. Then you slap on Colossus as well. I, I don't know how you're going to do damage to these characters. We're going to have to wait and see. It's going to be pretty crazy. And remember, she maintains her 100% chance to be immune to mind damage. Kind of important. Kind of important. She also gets 50% damage, 50 increase to all attacks at tier 1. Her tier 2 passive applies these things to the defender's ally. So Jessica Jones has turned into the ultimate support for Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and Daredevil. This is insanity. So not only are you going to get a damage reduction when your HP is below 35%, you're going to get a crazy damage reduction. Then you're going to get a 50% all attack increase. All That's all, always active. And you're going to get the 100% chance to be immune to mind damage. And when your HP drops below 35% and you get that damage reduction, you also get a 25% heal. Yeah. Crazy, crazy. So like basically she's a must have if you want to build up like if you're going to tier three Daredevil, 
you should strongly consider Jessica Jones because she's such a crazy support defensively. Just insane. And 50% all attack. Like, what? She's a leadership and support just walking. Crazy. So, and then she also gives herself super armor, all defense, reflect, and skill damage bonus damage. So, she's not even looking bad herself, but she's an insane support. She's got stun and fracture. She's got iframe ignore as well with chance to miss, incapacitation, and immunity. Only for two seconds, though. She's got another 40% all attack buff. So that's 90% all attack that she buffs herself in total. And then she gets all defense down, invincibility, and a frenzy buff. So man, she doesn't look that good as a standalone character. We're going to have to see how her damage works. But man, as a support, she's absolutely crazy, but only for the defenders. So we're, we're getting more technical now, right? And then check out what they did for our boy, Iron Fist. Looking crazy. His new uniform effect, when he drops below 50, he gets a 30% heal in 5 seconds of invincibility. This is on a 20 second cooldown. Really good if you struggle taking damage against Null. This is going to pop you back up constantly. Really, really nice thing here. And then his new leadership, look at this. Blood Ow! 60% all attack to defenders allies. So if you get Luke, bro, if you get jessica jones and you get luke um iron fist leadership and then you get daredevil daredevil is going to be getting a 60 percent all attack buff from iron fist and then a 50 percent all attack buff from jessica that's 110 percent all attack yeah that's insane i know uh 10 chance when attacking to increase his attack by 30 percent for five seconds he gets he keeps his guaranteed crit and, and uh crit rate and dodge which is awesome he gains skill damage bonus damage he has paralysis he has another 30 percent energy attack buff with accumulation and immunity this is accumulation damage dealt not received so good with a 1.2 multiplier which like 1.2 percentage stacking which is really nice um, he does have burn damage, so he has burn, silence, and paralysis. He has all three of the ABX effects. Keep that in mind. Um, he has minus 50 all defense down. Uh, and then he's got the frenzy effect with penetration. So, man, the defenders are looking like I'm sweating after reading all these buffs and stuff because the synergies between these characters is just crazy, bro. You're just, like, building this super-duper ultra team with, like, three leaderships worth of buffs offensively and then all these crazy healing and defensive buffs at the same time they like honestly the defenders as a as a quad as a do du double duo whatever you want to call it but the defenders as a unit are going to be seen in so much content now like they might be the second best team now for ac stuff for ac competitive stuff because of how painful they might be to 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 beat or that they might easily counter anybody who has like any like they might, they might counter null easily because he's all physical so luke cage's leadership just turns him into a baby crazy absolutely crazy so yeah i'm excited to see that Whew. we're getting 10 new characters with uh potential which is cool the obviously the staples that you expect to see that didn't get it that are related to the the, um, the defenders and of course icarus uh black cat modok absorbing man and titania are the only four that don't really fit the bill black cat she's kind of in the hell's kitchen thing but modok not quite, but kind of, but yeah. So sure, these 10 characters getting their potential. Daredevil's tier three skill doesn't have a lot of text. And you know what? I'm honestly okay with that. I don't want every tier three skill to feel the same and not every tier three skill needs like penetration or whatever, or this or that. He gets hundred percent ignore dodge where he already had 70%. So I don't know what he's gonna do to null. He's gonna like delete null from the game. Um, he gets hundred percent chance to miss if you can apply debuffs to the enemy, of course. And then he gets 10 seconds of invincibility and he gets 10, 40% uh, all attack for 10 seconds. I think that's enough, baby. The 10 seconds of invincibility are going to be great so that he doesn't get guard broken. I think this is awesome. And it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful skill, man. So good. They have the old over the shoulder boulder holder there with that with that camera. And then he goes into the, you know, he goes into the sense mode and he just sees you and he scopes you out. Beautiful, gorgeous. Uh, transcended skills for Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, and Iron Fist. I don't have much to say about this. These are very cookie cutter as far as the stats and the buffs go. I looked through these. There's nothing special. The only thing is more paralysis for the ABX stuff. If that's a, you know, because I don't think Jessica has paralysis on her base skills. But yeah, I think he's the only one that's really going to make noise in ABX because he has all three abilities. But he is also competing with um, Moon Knight and Venom at this point. But yeah, these skills are cool. I like the way they look, but the the stats you know for now we can basically just look at any other transcended character recently and see that the, the the buffs and the stuff are the same and then we have world boss legend mephisto so this is crazy out of left completely out of left field 
Uh, and But this is where my one complaint, my one criticism of this update and this patch note comes from. So let me just break it down for you. The unlock requirements for Mephisto are exactly the same as Null. You're going to need to beat the other nine. You don't have to beat Null. You don't even have to have Null unlocked. So it sort of exists separately from Null, but it's basically a duplicate of Null. You're going to have to beat Proxima five times. You're going to have to beat Corvus five times, Ebony five times, Thanos five times, uh, Black Dwarf five times, Cable, Apocalypse, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch five times. So the other nine world bosses with ultimate difficulty, you have to beat them each five times or you have to pay the crystals. I like Mephisto a lot and I, I think his world boss stage fight is really cool. So I'm I'm kind of tempted to just pay the crystals. It's like a, it's a lot of crystals. It's like 15,000 crystals or something like that. So I'm going to have to dip into the piggy bank and, and, and pay. But I'm kind of thinking about it so I can bring you guys that content right away because there's no APK to test it out on. I don't really want to wait nine. I don't want to wait a week to, to do that. But if you are going to wait, if you're not going to be crazy like me and spend crystals, you should not play world boss before the, the maintenance, because then you'll be one day ahead rather than being one day late. If you play them before the maintenance, because you can get your first five runs in on any one of the bosses preemptively. So, yeah, those are the requirements. And I don't actually mind the requirements. I don't actually mind that you have to beat these nine world bosses uh, five times. That's not my complaint. My complaint is in the rewards and it's not what you might think, but yeah, the stage is going to have similar requirements as null does. So they sort of flip flopped it for null from stage. Um, well, actually this is stage 15 requires males, but anyways, like for null stage 10 to 14 requires males and then stage 15 and up requires something else. It seems like here they're sort of flip flopping it where instead of requiring mail from 10 to 14, they're requiring mail from like 15 to 19 or something like that. So we'll see how this ends up affecting the two world boss uh, legends. But uh, the rewards for Null, you can see these are the stage clear rewards that you can possibly that you get guaranteed or possibly get every single time. And these are the conquer rewards. These are all exactly the same as Null, except for one, which is the mighty CTP of regeneration. So you can get the mighty ctp of regeneration is like whatever a uh, you know people will say like 0.0001 percent chance you know it's a low drop chance but it, it's there instead of the mighty ctp of energy which you can get from null that's the one difference between these two bosses null obviously has the guaranteed ccf and they clarified cosmic cube fragments are 100 guaranteed upon clearing a mephisto stage so the rewards the day-to-day -day rewards are exactly the same that's where I have my one criticism. I was again, I, I may be in the minority with this one. Maybe you guys didn't don't agree with me. And that's fine. But personally, I was hoping that they would do something a little bit different for Mephisto and make him a little bit different than Null. So maybe this might sound crazy, but maybe Mephisto doesn't drop any Cosmic Cube fragments, but he drops a lot more Essence of Dimension. And then he drops like the normal amount of Titan component packs or vice versa. He drops a lot of Titan component packs and a regular amount of Essence of Dimension and no Cosmic Cube Fragments. Because I sort of I sort of saw it as a balancing act, right? If you need CCF, you go and play Null. And then if you need something else, you go and play Mephisto. And then if you need something else, you go and play another boss. But it seems like that what they want to do is have all these world boss legends with identical reward drops. And then you as the player just get to choose which one you play. It's sort of what we have now with regular world boss ultimate. You know, they all drop tier two materials uh, and they all have a chance to drop CCF and books and uh, Odin's blessings. The only difference is Thanos can drop an extra CCF drop, right? He has a, he has one bonus one because he's like the leader of the Black Order. These characters, Null, Mephisto, etc. They don't really have like a leader. There's no, they're not like a group. So that that is not going to be the case for them. But yeah, I. I I can understand why the rewards are the same. At the same time, I sort of wanted a little bit of differentiation. Again, it's this is my one complaint. So if you don't think this is a big deal, then yeah, the rest of the the rest of the uh, patches are awesome. We have this new um, Alliance weekly contribution. This is basically just extra rewards. If you're not in an Alliance, you're honestly not getting a lot out of the game. So you should be in an Alliance with active members. And uh, this just gives you a really easy way to realize how much gold or what clear tickets you're giving up if you're not in alliance. So this is the normal daily contribution that everybody gets. And then this is the weekly contribution that they're going to be adding. So basically, if you just play the game normally and you have an active alliance, you're just going to be getting an extra 670,000 gold per week and an extra 250 clear tickets. That's actually 250 clear tickets for some people is actually going to matter a lot, right? You're, if you burn through 50 clear tickets a day, that almost covers your whole week right of, of uh, going in the negative for clear tickets. So 
yeah, they're bumping up whatever you'd be getting. You know, the, the rewards in a week are now going to be this much if they combine the daily times seven with the weekly times one. So yeah, just extra rewards for free. Pretty cool. And then they're going to show the weekly contribution when you're looking for an alliance. But yeah, just just get into an alliance. Trust me, it's it's great. It's just free rewards and free buffs. Uh, we have the new future pass with the new icons. This is where you guys are going to lose, absolutely lose your minds and lose your marbles. Uh, we've got Icarus there for the for the normal one, but we have the new icons. Look at these new icons, buddy. They smashed it out of the park. I have not bought the Mythic Future Pass in like a year. And you guys tempted me. You guys were like, he's going to buy it for Wolverine. He's going to he's going to cave. I didn't. I didn't buy Wolverine's icon, but you know what? I'm 100% going to buy this one for uh, Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider is the $50 um, icon, and Scarlet Witch is the $10 icon, or $15 icon if you're in Canada. And then Daredevil is going to be the token icon. So if you were planning to get the Mega Tier 2 ticket from the token event that's going to happen like a week or two after the update comes out, you're going to have to sacrifice the Mega Tier 2 ticket to get the token. I think it's worth it. He looks absolutely sick. All three of these icons are 100% bangers, 100% banger.com. I cannot stress how amazing all three of these look. It's dope. This gives me hardcore Batman vibes. I love it. I love these icons. I want to marry these icons. So yeah, they did good this time. Some, sometimes one of the icons is like weak. Basically every update, one of the icons is weak, but this time they just absolutely smashed it out of the park. These are all so sick. And you know what? So we saw in the first phase of the Mephisto fight, again, I'm just speculating, but we saw in the first phase of the Mephisto fight that Doctor Strange comes in and helps you. And now I'm looking at what people have been saying about uh, the other very closely related characters to Mephisto being uh, Scarlet Witch and Ghost Rider. Now I'm looking at these icons being Scarlet Witch and Ghost Rider and I'm like, it makes sense. So maybe in phase two and phase three of the fight, we're gonna see Ghost Rider and Scarlet Witch, which, which would be so cool. So yeah, I can't wait for that, which is why I'm contemplating dropping 15,000 crystals to just get into Mephisto day one. Can you blame me, right? Can you blame me? So yeah, uh, new uniform collection, nothing, you know, nothing uh, too spicy here, but it's just the normal reward. Uh, new quality of life thing. If you want to upgrade instantly from 20 to 25, you can do that and just watch your resources just get absolutely flushed down the toilet. Um, they have changed a couple of things as far as like the Shield Academy and they changed the description text. So they're not actually changing the effect, they're just letting you know that previously it would say cooldown time one second for a passive buff because that's how long it would take to come back on if it were removed by an effect that removes all buffs like Thanos' first skill. Now it's going to say effect reactivates in one second after being removed. It's just a text change to be more clear about what it does. They're changing Gambit's um, fifth skill character, uh, fifth skill name from Royal Flush to Cardstorm because his um, right now both his uh, transcended skill and his fifth skill have the same name or sorry F royal flush here and royal yeah his passive and his fifth skill are the same so they're going to change his fifth skill to card storm which uh yeah storm aurora uh they're gonna add these label stickers to skills in the team skill selection i, I don't know sure they're gonna fix the creepy deadpool 30th anniversary animation they're going to be removing the honor token shop. So this one's really important. If you were saving your honor tokens, uh, you basically have two choices now because now we know how much gold you're going to get 100 gold per token. So I'm not talking about these these um, glory tokens. I'm talking about these honor tokens right here. I don't have any more. I spent them all. But these bird icon tokens, if you still have them, you have like whatever, five hours from this update dropping to either spend them or save them. Now, if you save them, you can get a decent amount of gold. You can store, I think, up to 60,000 uh, honor tokens. That's the limit. So you'll get 6 million gold for that. That's not bad. That's honestly not that bad. That's like a couple of days worth of gold farming. Um, so if you've, if you've held them up until now and you need the gold, I would say just wait. But otherwise, you should have spent them by now to either get a, a, like a boat ton of bios or a boat ton of um, honor card, like comic cards like one and two star comic cards that you then convert up to three star etc so yeah that's gonna be happening after the update and then they're gone forever so make your decision millions of gold or bios or cards um they're doing some conquest thing when people like leave the game screen for a certain amount of time 
Uh, here we go. This is one of the cr this is one of the best improvements that's gonna fly under the radar. Some skills have been improved to be used more easily in World Boss Legend Null. Sharon Rogers' fifth skill and Deadpool's fourth skill. I don't know anybody that was using Deadpool against Null. That's kind of sad, but Sharon Rogers' tier three skill sounds like it's not gonna be so easily canceled. That's awesome. I didn't even make a video about that. I didn't even complain about that. And I guess you guys did because they heard and they're changing it. So that's dope. Very, very good. And then we have a whole bunch of game error fixes. Now, I don't want to read into this too much, but this game looks like it's in a really healthy position because look at how many game error fixes they're doing in one update. 15. I cannot remember the last time that the patch notes had this many game error fixes. Now, you could say that like, oh, it's bad. That there's so many errors, but every game has errors, right? Coding and, and all this stuff. It's a lot of work and there's it's so easy, right? One letter off, one character off and you can make mistakes. And there's so much like cross mistaking that can happen because things are interacting weirdly with one another. There's like infinite possibilities. But the fact that they found and are changing, fixing this many is a good sign, right? They're paying attention, they're going in, they're looking, they're reading the community feedback, and then they're taking it seriously and following up on it. So I think this is a really good sign. I don't wanna go through all of it, um, but there's some, th some things in here about the calculation of uh, ties in Alliance Conquest. So if you play Alliance Conquest, you should read this a bit more carefully. There's a, like a related notice. There's actually like more text involved. So that's why I'm not trying to read it right now. It's a little bit too much, but uh, yeah, they're fixing a whole bunch of bugs, which is cool. So yeah, that's the patch. Those are the patch notes. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Just to recap, four Defenders characters are getting absolutely top to bottom reworked, like, you know, like your mom's cleaning your kitchen type rework. We're getting World Boss Legend Mephisto, which is super dope and doesn't have any worse rewards than Null. So it's, you know, still the one of the best and most rewarding game modes uh, and places to invest. Um, and then we're getting a brand new character, Icarus, who's free for now. Uh, and then we're getting, uh, you know, quality of life changes and things like that. So got to say, this is a banger. 2021, we're, we're, we're dropping bangers left and right for MFF. I'm pretty hyped. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later tonight for a late stream on Twitch for the first impressions and first reaction to the update and all the uh, update content. So yeah, see you guys on Twitch. Again, thank you so much for watching. Have a good day, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.